Hello everyone, this is Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Remember to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share this video. Check out the notes section below for important links. All right, you know what I'm going to talk about. Bitcoin hit $800 as I'm going on the air tonight. Bitcoin is over $800. If you're in America and you have dollars and you can only go to Coinbase, you got to pay over $800 now. Wow. So 2016 has been a great year for Bitcoin. I, I mean, I think we can say this right now as it hits $800. I mean, remember in November of 2015, I think Bitcoin was in the 200s still. I mean, that is only like 13 months ago. And remember when Mike Hearn quit Bitcoin back in January and he said it was over, the experiment was over. And, and just all the panic and all the FUD associated with it and all the mainstream media blindly covering that story to no end. Well, it's a good, it ended up being a great year. <laughs> no matter what, if you were just patient and you held and you didn't panic because of all these insane things. And I just wonder now that we've, we've come back to $800, if the media will cover this, it's a slow, it's a slow media week because, um, um, this weekend is a holiday for some people and a lot of people just don't work this week, don't work next week. So I don't know how much coverage this is going to get um, and how many people will actually be paying attention. But I mean, it could, it could send people like into a fear of missing out type of thing, which would be great because we didn't miss out. Most of you already have quite a bit of Bitcoin, hopefully. And I, I, I hope you do at least. So, uh, I think looking back, we can agree uh, that the halving in the middle of the year, uh, that, was, that was a bullish event. And uh, a lot of people were predicting different things that maybe the, everything would go to zero. <laughs> you heard all sorts of different scenarios. I think we can look back and honestly say it, it played a role in where we are today, how we got up to 800 today. I mean, it does the halving translate automatically into a doubling of price or, or close to a doubling of price? Um, some will argue that it does now. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you ever be able to prove it, but I will say this, that if you're not looking forward to the halving of 2020, because that's the next halving is in 2020, not so far away. There's a, another presidential election that year too. Oh God. But, <laughs> but the halving is much more important. And um, I, I think you, you, I don't see how anyone without, after living through this halving and seeing that the price is 800 now, um, could not hold as much Bitcoin as they possibly can until at least um, after the halving of 2020. Um, I, I think you have to be really bullish on that event and you have to learn how to be patient. And you have to learn how to, I mean, not to get into any financial calamities between here and, and then, um, so you don't have to sell your Bitcoin. Don't, don't flip around or trade your Bitcoin, as I've always advised to everyone on here. Um, I'd like to uh, give a uh, quote uh, from Vinnie Lingham's uh, Twitter. I will link to it below. And I don't know what he's exactly referring to in terms of the date, but here it goes. December 19th, 1996, herald, heralded the dawn of the information age. 2016 has led us into the misinformation age. Math is now the only source of truth. Pound Bitcoin or hashtag Bitcoin. I think that's pretty awesome. I don't know what happened on December 19th, 1996. I'm sorry if I'm naive. Um, I can remember 1996 now. Anyway, altcoin trading. I'd like to mention, I was thinking about altcoin trading the other day. And it is, like it or not, it exists. And it really, at least in the United States of America, it needs Bitcoin enabled. Bitcoin is the fuel of altcoin trading. You're not trading dollars for uh, altcoins on these exchanges. You're you're using your Bitcoin to buy. I mean, you, there's few places you can buy altcoins with dollars. You can buy Litecoin 
and Ethereum, obviously, at the, uh, the GDAX. But, but other than that, uh, no, you're, you're not going to get your uh, Monero many other places but in exchange. And for that reason, this separate industry, um, which lives on the, board, the gray market area almost, I think it's, I, I mean, I have no problem with it at all. But you know regulators are just like salivating, wanting to like do something. Like how can these people use Bitcoin of all things to get different versions of Bitcoin, this cryptocurrency thing. So it, it serves as kind of a, a buffer to Bitcoin because the regulators will probably attack the altcoin trading and these uh, anonymous coins before they would hit just regular Bitcoin trading. Now, I don't want that to happen. And, but, but, it, I mean, I don't know, I think it's interesting that, that Bitcoin has a, that's a use case for Bitcoin, getting into the altcoin trades. Now, what are the use case for separate altcoins? I mean, just pure speculation right now. So, I mean, I, I don't think they're going to, even try to outlaw Bitcoin in, in the United States. I think that would be very bad. On the other hand, co cocaine is illegal in the United States. Do people stop using cocaine? Can you not get cocaine anywhere? I mean, you see people doing cocaine all the time at certain parties or, or, or crack cocaine on the streets of Baltimore all the time. Uh, you see vials and people selling it all the time. So, I mean, uh, if they made a Bitcoin illegal I, I don't think it would stop it at all you really can't and you can't stop bitcoin you could block people's access to altcoin trading sites maybe certain state i ain't i don't even know if you could do that i don't even know how they could say you can't trade altcoins but it would scare some people away from it it does serve as a buy i I'm, i don't know if i'm making my line of thinking very clear here but it does it does serve as a buffer to people, uh, regulators going after Bitcoin. They could go after uh, something that's it's shadier. It is, again, I don't think it's shady at all. I mean, do what you want to do. It's your money. We should be able to do with uh, what we want to do with our money, with our Bitcoin. All right, finally, a link to a, a Twitter post, uh, a tweet by Eric Voorhees. He, uh, there's a picture of a, uh, a Swiss receipt at a train station. You can buy Bitcoin at uh, train stations at Swiss in Switzerland. Uh, but you do have to give your phone number, your, your Swiss phone number. So they are keeping track of it. They will find out how much Bitcoin you own <laughs> if you buy it that way. But still, it's very interesting that you can buy Bitcoin just like that at, 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 at a, a train station. It's really awesome. I'm Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister. I will talk to you later. 800.